Section 9.2, Solving Systems by Substitution. This way is much more fun than graphing. You're going to love it. Okay, so now we still have systems, which are two or more equations, and we still have two unknowns. So what we want to do is we want to use substitution to, uh, instead, of, instead of the cumbersome graph, let's just use substitution. Now, I've got some steps here. Here we go. And they look long and laborious, so go ahead and write them out so that you know what, you're, what we're doing. And I'll point them out as we do it. And then um, once you see how it works, it won't seem quite so cumbersome. The, the words will make sense and it'll just become concepts in your head. So step one says to isolate the variable in one of the equations. All right. In this, in this system of equations, x equals 3 minus y and 5x plus 3y equals 5. Well, in this set, if you look, this equation already has that step done. All right. Because this x is by itself. It's isolated. All right. So on this one, you can see you've got a 2x and you've got a 5. So on this one, we'll have to do something to isolate the variable. But on this one, that step is done for us. So let's move to step number two. Step number two says to use the puzzle piece in the other equation. All right. So what we're going to do is this. The puzzle piece that I'm talking about is this x equals this. Whatever x equals, that becomes your puzzle piece. And what you're going to do is, wherever you see x, you're going to replace it with this whole thing, this 3 minus y. So we're going to put it into the other equation. We're going to put 5 times x. Well, x is 3 minus y. And then the rest of your equation, because there are no other x's, the rest of your equation just stays the same. All right, so once it's in there, then ignore the rest for a minute and just work on this equation. You're going to have to use your problem solving skills and your order of operations. Make sure that you're um, using FOIL and using all these other steps. So in this one, we're going to have to distribute the 5 through and get 15 minus 5y plus 3y equals 5. Oh, and that's what I'm, now what I'm doing is number 3 already. I'm solving for one of the variables. So you can see that it goes quick and you realize, oh, wait a minute, I'm on another step, okay? So step 2 was to put the puzzle piece in. So this is step 2. And now step 3 is to actually solve it. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm solving. And now, so now negative 5y plus 3y, that's 15 minus 2y equals 5. Subtract 15. So negative 2y equals negative 10. Divide by negative 2. So y equals 5. Negative divided by negative becomes a positive. So y is 5. And so that's step 3. I solved for one of the variables. Okay? So we already have half of our problem done. y is 5. Number 4 says put the value or the number into either of the original equations. Now here's the deal. You can put it into either equation that you want. If you've already solved for the for one of the variables, it's going to be easiest to put that into the equation where you solved it out. So let's put y in. Now we have a puzzle piece for y is 5. So let's go back and put it into this equation. So now we know x equals 3 minus y, and we know y is 5. So 3 minus 5, x must be negative 2. And so that's what we did there. Number five, solve for the second variable. So there's step four, and there's step five. All right, so you can see what I did and where it is. So now your solution, make sure that you don't just leave it all willy-nilly. Your solution is x is negative two, and y is five. So your solution is the point negative two, five. So make sure that you give me a final answer. All right, let's do another one. On this one, we're going to have to do the step of solving for an unknown. All right, so we've got 2x equals 10 minus y. We can divide everything by 2 to get the x by itself. If we do that, we're going to end up with a 1 half x, or a 1 half y, which will work and we'll still get the same answer, but it's just easier if we don't have to use fractions. So instead, let's add the y to both sides. 
and then subtract the 2. So let's add y, and that makes it a positive y on this side of the equation, and then we're going to subtract 2x from both sides, so I'm going to have a negative 2x plus 10. Did you see where I got up, got that? So I, I added y to move it to this side, and I subtracted 2x to move it to that side, and now y is all by itself. So that's that step one that we didn't have to do above. All right, so now we have that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to plug this as our puzzle piece, plug that into the, to the other equation. Now make sure you put it into the other equation. If you put it into the same equation, it's not going to help you. All right, so put that into the other equation. So now 3x minus this y, so minus negative 2x plus 10 equals 5. So now be careful, this is negative of all of that, so you're going to have to distribute that negative through. So now you have 3x plus 2x, because a negative times a negative is a positive, and a negative times a positive is a negative 10, and that equals 5. Combine these, 5x minus 10 equals 5. Add 10 to both sides. I hope I'm not going too quick. You should be able to, now we're just solving. 5x equals 15, divide by 5. So x equals 3. And now we're going to take that piece and put it into what, and you know what, in my, um, in my steps I said to put it into the original equation, which would have been one of these. You can also put it back into your puzzle piece and then you don't have to solve quite as much. You've already solved for y, just put it into your puzzle piece. Okay, so this would be y equals negative 2 times 3 plus 10. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6 plus 10. So y equals 4. And so don't forget to put your final answer. 3, 4 is your final answer. Easy sneezy? All right, let's do a couple more. If you think you got it, go ahead and get started. This one is already, step one is already done, the y is already isolated, so here's your puzzle piece. Put it in, 4x minus 2 times 2x minus 7, because y is equal to this, so instead of y, I put this whole thing, that equals negative 3. Don't forget to distribute through, 4x minus 4x uh, plus, negative times a negative is a plus 7 equals negative 3. 4x minus 4x goes away, so 7, oh wait a minute, does 7 equal negative 3? No it doesn't. If you put a puzzle piece in and then you end up with an untrue statement, that means that no matter what you put in to both of these equations, no matter what combination of numbers you put in, there is no way to end up with, um, with a solution. There is no way that this can ever be a true statement. So, in that case, this is no solution. So, if you'll remember, this is, um, these, are, these are lines that are parallel. They're never going to cross. All right? No solution. So, if you come up with a statement that is untrue, no solution. All right. One more. Let's do it. All right, on this one we do need to solve for y. The y is, is the only one that doesn't have a coefficient, so I would solve for y. So add y to both sides and get y by itself, and then subtract the 4, so you end up with 3x minus 4. So did I confuse you by putting it back on the other side of the equation? So when I added y to both sides, that makes the y positive and gets it onto this side, and then I subtracted 4 to get it on this side, but just so that we keep it, and then I flip-flopped the whole equation and said y equals 3x minus 4. Does that make sense? Hope so. Okay, so now we're going to take 2 times y, and y is 3x minus 4 minus 6x equals negative 8. So distribute through, 2 times 3 is 6x, 2 times a negative 4 is a negative 8, minus 6x equals negative 8. We've got a 6x minus 6x drops out, so we end up with negative 8 equal to negative 8. So this problem is very similar to this problem in that my variable totally dropped out, but it's different because negative 8 does in fact equal negative 8. So in this case, 
no matter what numbers you put in for x and y, if it's going to solve it for one, it's going to solve it for the other. So this is, this is the case where you've got an infinite number of solutions. This type of problem is, uh, has a, a, just a straight line. They share the same line. So this has infinite solutions. All right, so if you come upon one where you've got, you end up with uh, something equal to the number that it is equal to, then you've got infinite solutions. All right, we've done several. Step one, make sure to isolate a variable. Step two, put your puzzle piece in, solve for one variable, put that back into the puzzle piece equation so that you can solve for your other variable. Don't forget to give me um, an answer in point notation. All right, I think that's it. I will see you next time.